So good morning, everyone. Um, we are the group four. We are going to talk about the measuring volume. For the objective, um, we will be able to know and, uh, and understand the procedures of using a pipette, burette, and vol volumetric flask. And to discuss the process of calibrating the pipette, burette, and volumetric flask, and to explain the following guide questions of and provide a conclusion of our um, acquired learning throughout the activity. So I will be giving this, um, I will be giving this the stage to Miss Gwyneth Moika. So hello, good morning, everyone. First, what is measuring volume? The liter or L or one cubic decimeter is the unit of volume. The milliliter is 1,000 of a liter unit of volume that is used when the liter is inconveniently big volume unit. A pipette, a bure, and a volumetric flask are used to accurately measure volume. The manufacturers markings on volumetric equipment not only specified the method of calibration, but also the temperature at which the calibration is absolutely applicable. Pipettes and bure are usually calibrated to deliver specific volumes, whereas volumetric flasks are calibrated to store a specific amount of liquid. Next. Next follow. For this page, I will give the stage and the floor to Sheena Sheena Fate on Dar. Ma'am, parang wala po si Ondar, ma'am. Ah, wala si Ondar. Pakisalo na lang ng part niya. <clears throat> so, what is the what is a, a pipette? A pipette is a tiny tube for moving liquids from one container to another. Um, pipettes, sometimes known as pipettes, are a typical scientific tool. Um, number one is... Uh, the procedure of using a pipette um, supply the need, the needed information for the following type of pipette. So, ito yung uh, different types of pipette, yung volumetric, more serological, Oswald, Fallen, Lambda, and Ependor. Um, the calibration of volumetric is to deliver, the more is to deliver, serological to deliver, <clears throat> serological, um, is to deliver also. Um, Oswald fallen is to deliver, lambda to contain, lambda to deliver, and Eppendorf to deliver. Um, the function of volumetric is to deliver um, fixed volume. Uh, the more is to deliver a variable volume, and the serological is to deliver a variable volume as well. And the Oswald fallen is to deliver a fixed volume. The lambda is to contain a fixed volume. The, la the another lambda is to deliver a fixed volume. So, ang isa is to contain, ang isa is deliver. So, ang Eppendorf is nag-deliver din siya ng fixed volume. So, ang uh, available capacity of volumetric is from 1 to 200 ml. Um, the more is 10 ml has 10 ml capacity and the serological has 0 0.1 to 10. The Oswald is has the capacity of 0 0.5 to 10 and the lambda 
has also the capacity of 0.00122. Dijpendorf has 0.1 mu to 10. So the type of drainage of each of these um, different types of pipette is the volumetric is to pre-drainage. Uh, more is to drain to lower calibration. Serological is to blow out last drop. The another serological is to drain to lower calibration. Um, the Oswald fallen it has uh, is to blow out last drop. The lambda is to wash out with suitable solvent. The lambda is the another lambda is to blow out last drop. So the Effendorf is to press the le the lever downward. The liquid the, the liquid drain form the pipette as a result of atmospheric pressure. Um, for the cleaning the pipette, uh, use a rubber bulb to draw detergent solution to to a level two to three centimeter above the calibration mark of the pipette. Uh, drain this solution and then and then re rinse the pipette with several portions of tap water. Um, inspect for films, um, breaks, and then repeat this portion for the cleaning cycle if necessary. Finally, fill the pipette with distilled water to perhaps one third of its capacity and carefully rotate it so that the entire interior surface is wetted. Repeat this rinsing step at least twice. So, so Ms. Andar is now present, so I will be giving the next slide to her. So number three, measuring an aliquote. Use a rubber bulb to draw a small volume of the liquid to be sampled into the pipette and truly wet the entire inter interior surface. Repeat with at least two additional portions. So explain the purpose of this procedure. A rubber bulb, bulb must be used for all pipetting to aspi aspirate and discharge liquid a rubber bulb is commonly a affixed to the pipette stop to operate a pump. It's deal for transferring liquids in tiny quantities that don't require precise measurement. Next pop. Excuse me, ma'am. I think there are some problems with her internet connection. So um, I will continue, ma'am. So measuring aliquot. So uh, I will start from the very start. So uh, first is to carefully fill the pipette a level somewhat above the graduation mark. Then quickly replace the bulb with the forefinger to arrest the outflow of the liquid and make certain that there are no bubbles in the bulk of the liquid or foam at the surface. After that, tilt the pipette slightly from the vertical and wipe the exterior free of adhering liquid. Then, touch the tip of the pipette to the wall of a glass vessel and slowly allow the liquid level to drop by partially releasing the forefinger. Halt further flow as the bottom of the meniscus coincides exactly with the graduation mark. Then place the pipette tip well within the receiving vessel and allow the liquid to drain. When free flow ceases, rest the tip against the inner wall of the receiver for a full 10 seconds. And finally, withdraw the pipette with a rotating motion to remove any liquid adhering to the tip. 
the small volume remaining inside the tip of a, volu of a volumetric pipette should not be blown or rinsed into the receiving vessels. Next slide, please. pet cleaning. The objective of this video is to learn how to clean a pipette. Before use, rinse your pipette with distilled water to verify whether it is clean. Cleanliness is indicated by the presence of an unbroken film of distilled water coating the inside of the surface when the pipette is drained. A dirty pipette will have droplets on the inside surface. To clean a dirty pipette, wash it with a 2% solution of soapy water. Dissolve a small amount of detergent into warm water. Using too much soap will make it difficult to rinse the soap from your pipette, contaminating it further. Using the suction bulb to draw a small portion of soapy water into the pipette, Make a seal on the top of the pipette with your index finger. Tilt and roll the pipette until the inner surface has been wetted with soapy water, up to a point a couple of centimeters from the top. Drain the soapy water into a waste container. Rinse the pipette with deionized water three times. To do this, fill the pipette to just above the bulge in the pipette. Remove the pipette bulb and seal the pipette with your index finger. Remove and hold the pipette horizontally. Tilt the pipette slightly backwards and allow the solution to flow one to two centimeters from the top. Hold the pipette horizontally and rotate. It is important to rinse above the calibration mark because solution will rise above this level before the volume is adjusted. Repeat rinsing the pipette two more times for a total of three rinses. Check the cleanliness of your pipette again. Distilled water should drain out cleanly, leaving no drops behind. You now know how to clean a pipette. So the videos that uh, that was presented was uh, can be used as your future references and for uh, further understanding. So the next reporter, please. Good morning, everyone. So. By defining a bureau, a bureau is a device that is used to accurately distribute small amounts of liquid, aliquots, or gas. It's made out of a long glass tube with a valve at one end for controlling liquid flow. Bureau are used in the same way that pipettes are used. Next slide, please. Letter B for using a bureau for process of using a bureau. So before using a bureau, it is important to clean it to ensure there are no contaminants present inside the surface in order for the bureau to perform optimally and proper clean. So for the procedure of cleaning the bureau, thoroughly clean the tube of the bureau with detergent and a long brush. Rinse thoroughly with tap water and then distilled water. Inspect for water breaks. Repeat the treatment if necessary. For the next slide, I am passing the virtual stage to Ms. Patwalpo. So for filling the bureau, so first is make certain that the stopcock is closed, then add five to 10 ml of solution to be dispensed and carefully rotate the bureau to wet the interior completely. So the purpose of this procedure is to 
eliminate any distilled water present during ensuring that the solution has the contact with all the inside surface of the burette to avoid contamination issues during the titration process. So next is to allow the liquid to drain through the tip. Repeat this procedure at least two more times and then fill the beret well, well above the zero mark. Then free the tip of air bubbles by rapidly rotating the stopcock and permitting small quantities of the titrant to pass. So dito is if ever kasi na may present ng air bubbles, um, ang um, mangyayari is magiging slightly higher yung amount ng volume ng uh, ng nanarecord mo than the amount you've actually added na magiging um, result sa incorrect na values ng titer na mag, magkaka-affect sa calculated results after. Then next is, finally, lower the level of the liquid just two or somewhat below the zero mark and then allow for drainage for one minute and then record the initial volume reading estimating to the nearest 0.01 mm. So for the readings will be um, reported by Ms. Nadine Olarte. Next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, for the initial reading, based on the picture given on this activity, the solution is leveled below the zero, exactly within 0 0.1 ml. For the final reading, the solution is leveled between 17 and 18, almost near in 17. And to be exact, it is in 17.2 ml. Uh, for getting the volume delivered, we have the formula V sub delivered equals V sub final minus V sub initial. Uh, substituting the values of readings, 17.2 ml, which is the final reading, minus 0 0.1 ml, which is the initial volume, is equal to 17.1 ml. Therefore, the volume delivered is 17.1 ml. So we have prepared videos on how to clean and fill a burette. Burette. Cleaning a burette. Before use, rinse the burette with deionized water to verify that it is clean. Cleanliness is indicated by the presence of an unbroken film coating the inside surface of the burette when deionized water is drained. Note that this test only works for distilled or deionized water. If the burette is dirty after several rinses with deionized water, clean with warm soapy water and a burette brush. Fill the burette with warm soapy water. Avoid using too much detergent in the soapy water and never apply detergent directly to the glassware to be cleaned as it will make rinsing extremely difficult. A solution of approximately 2% soap in warm water should be used. Use a burette brush to clean the inside of the burette, gently scrubbing up and down for the entire length of the burette. Be extremely careful when washing a burette as it is easy to break. Do not wash the burette in the sink, but at the bench instead. Remove the burette brush and drain the majority of the soapy water out of the top of the burette. Clamp the burette to the burette stand and allow the remaining soapy water to drain through the stopcock. The stopcock must be taken apart to be cleaned. First, remove the Teflon nut, the rubber washer, and the Teflon washer. Then, remove the stopcock. Gently scrub the stopcock with warm, soapy water and a brush. Rinse with deionized water.
then replace the stopcock in the burette, followed by the Teflon washer, rubber washer, and then the Teflon knife. Be sure that the correct order is maintained as this is critical for the function of the stopcock. Tighten the Teflon nut so that the stopcock can be turned easily but is not too loose. Fill the burette partially with deionized water and roll while holding horizontally to rinse. Pour a portion of the rinsings out the top of the burette. Clamp the burette to the stand and allow the remaining water to drain through the stopcock. Repeat these steps to rinse the burette with deionized water two more times for a total of three rinses. Washing with soap is normally only necessary to remove contaminants, which are not water soluble. Once clean, burettes usually only need to be rinsed with distilled water after a titration. The burette is now clean and can be rinsed with titrant or refilled with deionized water for storage. So for the next reporter, um, we will be giving the the spotlight to Miss Gwyneth. So for the volumetric flask, a, vo a volumetric flask is a type of scientific glassware used for a solution preparation. A volumetric flask is a bulb with a flat bottom and an el elongated neck that is calibrated to contain a specific volume at a point on the neck because its mark specifies a precise volume measurement and that the flask is also known as graded flask or measuring flask. Next book. So the process of using a volumetric flask is first cleaning. Volumetric flask should be washed with with detergent and truly rinse. Only rarely do they need to be dried. If required, however, drying is the best accomplished by clamping the flask in an inverted position. Insertion of a glass, insertion of a glass tube connected to a vacuum line fastens the process. Second is direct weighing into a volumetric flask. The direct preparation of a standard solution requires the introduction of a known mass of a solute to a volumetric flask. Use of a powder panel minimize the possibility of loss of solid during the transfer. Rinse the funnel truly. Collect the washings in the flask. The foregoing procedure may be inappropriate if heating is needed to dissolve the solute. Instead, weigh the solid into a beaker or flask. Add solvent, heat to dissolve the solute, and allow the solution to cool to room temperature. Transfer this solution quantitatively to the volumetric flask as described in the next section. Next book. So, um, next is quantitative transfer of a, to, of a liquid to a volumetric flask. Insert a funnel into the neck of the volumetric flask. Use a steering rod to direct the flow of a liquid from the beaker into the funnel. Tip of the last drop of the liquid on the spot of the beaker with the steering rod. Rinse both the steering rod and the interior of the beaker with distilled water and transfer for the washings to the volume class as before as before. Repeat the rinsing process at least two or more times. Um, then the shown to the mark. After the solute has been transferred, fill the flask about half full and swirl the contents to hasten solution. Add more solvent and again mix well. 
bring the liquid level almost to the mark and allow time for drainage. Uh, one minute is the time for drainage. Then use a medicine dropper to make such final additions of solvent as are necessary. Firmly stopper the flask and invert it repeatedly to ensure true mixing. Transfer the contents to a storage bottle that is either dry or has been truly rinsed with several small portions of the solution from the flask. We have a video of how to use a volumetric flask. In this video, you're going to learn how to use a volumetric flask. Before watching this video, make sure you've seen the meniscus video. This is a volumetric flask. They're easily recognizable by the wide base and the long, thin neck. Volumetric flasks are used to dilute solutions to very specific and precise volumes. Each volumetric flask is designed to hold one to volume. The volume is indicated by the number at the base of the flask. The graduation on the neck of the flask indicates where the meniscus will lie when the flask is filled correctly. As you can see, I have a prepared solution that I wish to dilute to an exact volume. To do this, I'll use a volumetric flask. Before using it, it's important that you rinse it thoroughly. To do this, you'll use your solvent. In this case, it's deionized water. Add small alicots of the solvent to the flask and then cap it. Swirl the solvent around, making sure to coat the entire inner surface of the flask. Then drain the solvent into the water. <clears throat> when draining, don't shake your volumetric flask because this can damage it. Do this several times before using it. Now that your flask is clean, you can begin to transfer your solution. To do this, place a funnel in the top of your flask and put your stirring rod down the center of the funnel. Slowly pour your solution down the stirring rod. Transferring this way helps to prevent your solution from splashing out of the flask. It's important not to pour too quickly and overfill the funnel because that can result in the loss of some of your solution. Now that you have emptied your solution from the beaker into the flask, there's still some solution remaining on the edges of the glassware. To make sure this all enters the flask, we, use a, we continue the process of quantitative transfer. The first step is rinsing out the beaker thoroughly with your solid, solvent. In my case, it's deionized water. Rinse the inside of the beaker and pour the rinsing into the flask down the stirring rod just as before. Do this three times to ensure that all of your solution is being removed from the beaker. Using several small alicots to rinse is more effective than using one large one. Now it's important to also rinse down your stirring rod and both the inside and stem of your funnel. Make sure to watch the amount of solvent you're using when making your rinsing because you don't want to fill the volumetric class past the graduation. Once you've finished with your rinsing, tap the flask and invert it several times to mix what you've put it in so far. Let the mixed solution settle and then fill it up with your salt. In this case, it's the ionized water. Fill it up to roughly one centimeter below the top graduation. At this point, you'll need to be careful not to overfill your flask. So you want to begin adding dropwise. The best way to do this is to decant some of your solvent and add it to the flask with a dropper or a pasture pipette. Again, you can do this quickly at first, but you'll want to slow down and be more dropwise as you get closer to the graduation. Try not to touch the inside of the flask with the tip of your dropper because this can cause contamination.
fill it slowly until the bottom of the meniscus lines up with the top graduation. You'll have to do this very carefully because if you go over by even a small amount, you will have to start again. Now that you've filled your flask with the correct volume, it's important to mix it just as shown before. This ensures that your solution is properly diluted. Once your solution has been properly prepared, you can accurately know the volume. Knowing this, you can calculate the concentration of the solution inside your volumetric flask. Doing this properly takes some time and practice, but if you follow the instructions that I've told you, you'll be able to master it in no time. So for the schematic diagram, it, it will be reported by Danica Vargas. So good morning, everyone. These are the schematic diagram that we have made to show you the flow of the procedures in using a pipette, the burette, and also the volumetric glass. So for using a pipette schematic diagram, we have the cleaning a pipette and measuring an aliquot. For the cleaning a pipette, so first is to use a rubber bulb to draw the detergent solution to a level two to three centimeter above the calibration mark of the pipette. Drain the solution and then rinse the pipette with several portions of tap water. Inspect for film breaks. Repeat this portion of the cleaning cycle if necessary. Fill the pipette with the sealed water to perhaps one third of its capacity and carefully rotate it so that the inter interior surface is wet. So for measuring an aliquot, first is to use a rubber bulb to draw, draw a small volume of the liquid to be sampled into the pipette and truly wet the inter interior surface. Repeat with at least two additional portions. Next is to carefully fill the pipette to a level somewhat above the graduation mark, and then quickly replace the bulb with a forefinger to arrest the outflow of the liquid, and to make certain there are no bubbles in the bulk of the liquid or foam at the surface. Tilt the pipette slightly from the vertical and wipe the exterior free of adhering liquid. Next is to touch the tip of the pipette to the wall of a glass vessel, not the container into which the aliquot is to be transferred and slowly allow the liquid level to drop by partially releasing the forefinger. Next is to halt further flow as the bottom of the meniscus coincides exactly with the graduation mark and place the pipette tip well within the receiving vessel and allow the liquid to drain. Next is when free flow ceases, um, rest the tip against the inner wall of the receiver for a full 10 seconds. And finally, we draw the pipette um, with a rotating motion to remove any liquid adhering to the tip. So next is using a burette schematic diagram. So we have here the cleaning and the filling. So for the cleaning, um, clean the tube of the burette with detergent and a long brush. Rinse thoroughly with tap water and then with distilled water and inspect for water breaks. Repeat for the treatment if necessary. Next is for the filling. Make certain that the stop cock is closed. Add five to 10 ml of the solution to be dispensed and carefully rotate the burette to wet the interior completely. Next is to allow the liquid to drain through the tip and repeat at least two more times. Next is to fill the burette with above the zero mark and uh, finally lower the level of the liquid just to or somewhat below the zero mark. Next is free tip of air bubbles by rapidly rotating the stopcock and permitting small quantities of the tight run to pass. And lastly is allow for drainage to um, one minute and then record the initial volume reading estimating to the nearest 0.01 ml. 
So lastly, um, the schematic diagram of using a volumetric class. So we have the cleaning, direct weighing into a volumetric class, quantitative transfer of liquid to a volumetric class, and deletion to the mark. So for the cleaning, volumetric class should be washed with detergent and thoroughly rinsed. Only ra rarely do they need to be dried. So drying is best accomplished by clamping the flask in an inverted position and insertion of a glass tube connected to a vacuum line has since the process. So for the number two, um, the direct preparation of a standard solution requires the introduction of a known mass of a solute to a volumetric glass. Next is to use a powder funnel to minimize the possibility of loss of solid during the transfer. Next is rinse the funnel thoroughly and collect the wash the washings in the flask. Next is the foregoing procedure may be inappropriate if heating is needed to dissolve the so solute. Weight the solid into a beaker or flask, add solvent, heat to dissolve the solute and allow the solution to cool to room temperature. Lastly is to transfer this solution quantitatively to the volumetric class as described in the next section. So for the quantitative transfer of liquid to a volumetric class, first is to insert a funnel into the neck of the volumetric class, use a steering rod to direct the flow of the liquid from the beaker into the funnel, tip up the last drop of the liquid on the spot of the beaker with the steering rod, and lastly rinse both the steering rod and the interior of the beaker with distilled water and transfer the washings to the volumetric class as before. So for the number four deletion to the mark, so first is after the solute has been transferred, fill the flask about half and swirl the contents to hasten the solution, add more solvent and again mix well. Then bring the liquid level almost to the mark and allow time for drainer. 41 minute, then use a medicine dropper to make such final additions of solvent as are necessary. Then firmly stop the flask and invert it repeatedly to ensure thorough mixing. And then lastly, transfer the contents to a storage bottle that is either dry or has been thoroughly rinsed with several small portions of the solution from the flask. For the process of calibration of pipette, um, an, an ordinary laboratory pipette may be expected to deliver its nominal volume with good precision and good accuracy. If it is used in the way recommended, in this experiment, we investigate um, the precision and accuracy of such a pipette by making accurate determinations of the mass of water it delivers in the repeated operation. First is to clean the beaker and the pipette and dry the beaker. Obtain uh, distilled water in the Erlenmeyer flask and let it stand on the bench of bench for about 15 minute, minutes before determining its temperature. Weigh the beaker on a balance which allows you to determine the mass to the nearest tenth of a milligram. Fill and discharge the pipette as recommended into the beaker and determine the mass of water discharge by, by taking the difference. Repeat step four until you have the, the results of four such trials. Um, determine the temperature of the water. You have pipetted and take the mean of the two temperatures you have measured as the effective temperature of the water during the calibration. Note, you do not need to empty and dry the beaker between trials. You should try um, to spend no more, more than half, more than half hour in the balance room so that everyone will have an opportunity to use the balance set in the time allotted. For the calibration of burette, um, the purpose of this equipment, these steps can be followed. Uh, weigh a clean beaker, weigh, and clean, weigh a clean dry beaker, deliver 
water from zero mark to the point of calibration with tip touching the beaker wall. Weight of the collected water plus beaker. Take note of the water temperature with a calibrated thermometer. Repeat process of at least three minutes, three times. Uh, volume collected um, where the, the density of water at recorded temperature and then record the, the delivery time and volume for consistent result. Calibration of volumetric flask. First is to dry the flask after rinsing with acetone. Take weight, uh, fill the flask up to the graduation mark and distilled water and weigh the filled flask. Note the temperature of water using the calibrated thermometer volume. Where the, where is, where is density of water at recorded temperature? And then repeat three to four times to ensure consistency of volume. For conclusion, uh, I will be giving this to Ms. Steva. So for the conclusion and this activity, it helped us to understand the procedures of pipettes, spirit, and volumetric flask, and it helps us to understand the calibration process of the pipettes, spirit, and volumetric flask. And in this activity, we were able to uh, watch the videos and help us understand all the procedures of this activity. And I think that's all for our report.